Every video game needs a good bad guy. Otherwise, what the hell are you doing? Just wasting time as you smash buttons on a controller. These assholes serve as a reminder as to why you must venture forth, be it stopping Bowser from kidnapping princesses or trying to vanquish a giant man who looks like an egg. The thing is, though, not all of these individuals are actually that bad. They may have been made out to be dicks on paper. When you take a step back and observe their actions, well, maybe they were onto something. I'm Simon from What Culture, and this is 10 video game villains who were right all along. Number 10, Revolver Ocelot. A mainstay of the Metal Gear Solid series, it's fair to say on paper Revolver Ocelot comes across like a crazy person. For one, he wanted to help Liquid Snake destroy the world with a walking nuclear tank. Because Hideo Kojima's series is never simple though, it actually turned out that Ocelot was a triple agent who spent all of his time playing sides against one another to get his hands on the Philosopher's Legacy and gain access to the Patriots, whatever that means. His goal seemingly is to free mankind and he takes this to a whole new level when after losing an arm in MGS1, he returns in the sequel with one of Liquid's arms shoved straight in its place. From there it all goes weird, obviously. Somehow Liquid's actual personality takes hold of him, convincing him to spread war and terror, but he's actually actually kept a small part of himself in his own subconscious so he can stop this and return power to the people. So he's kinda half awesome and half lunatic. Number 9, King Logan. Fable 3's King Logan certainly seems mad. The eldest son of your hero in Fable 2, he does force you to either kill a bunch of protesters or your love interest, though he's definitely got evil in him. He's also increased taxes, is well into slavery, and he likes a bit of corruption. It's only fair then that you try and successfully stage a coup. At this stage, however, you soon realise there's more crap on the way. A crawler threat is approaching your city of Albion and it could wipe out the entire population. The choice is then yours. You can either stick to your promises and rule nicely, which means you'll struggle when this evil turns up at your doorstep, or you too can rule like a dick, but actually protect people, even though they'll turn against you for it. So Logan was actually choosing this option not to be a moron because it was the only way to save everybody. Think of that. Number 8, Darth Treyer. The absolutely awesome centerpiece of KOTOR 2. The Jedi Master was exiled after her Padawan followed Psycho Darth Revan into battle. When she tried to stop this, Treya turned to the dark side, as you do. She also then took on two apprentices, which is just not allowed, and severed her connection with the Force. Damn it! This does make her a good mentor though, and she acts as a guide throughout the game when it comes to moral choices, often trying to explain the fallout of certain decisions. She never sticks to one side, however, often being quite balanced and fair in her critique. If anything, she sees good and bad in both the light and the dark, meaning Treya is actually a very fair and wise person. You can't just live one way and being open is key. Yet we're meant to think she's pure evil. Number 7, The Fireflies. Whether there's actually any good or bad in The Last of Us is up to you. For my money, it's just one big bag of depression. Where the Fireflies are concerned, though, they may be trying to do the right thing. An underground movement that's determined to find a cure for the zombie plague. It soon turns out that for them to do that, they need to operate on Ellie's brain. Given that main man Joel has basically become her surrogate father, he ain't up for that. So he kills a load of people and allows Ellie to escape. Now, Naughty Dog has deliberately left this open for interpretation because it's basically a potential worldwide cure versus killing a loved one. When the ends justify the means, maybe it's Joel who's the villain here. Number 6, Saren Artarius. Mass Effect Saren even looks evil. The trying to suggest he may not be is quite difficult. It looks like badness just threw up on him. The alien also murdered a fellow Spectre and activated a mysterious beacon before legging it. There's every reason to think he's a fool, and that's why it's your job to stop him. When you find Saren, however, things aren't that simple. The ship he's flying is actually a sentient monster that's been tasked with killing every everybody in the universe. On top of that, Saren is actually under the influence of indoctrination, so he's a reluctant betrayer. As he still has some of his own mind though, he believes he can at least curb some of the carnage and save some people, and that's the actions of a good person. Number 5, Scorpion. Scorpion from Mortal Kombat gets a really bad rap. Sure, he's basically the walking undead, but this dude is well within his rights to be a pissed off murdering machine. Why? Because Sub-Zero killed him along with the rest of Scorpion's clan due to some ancient war that had been raging for years. I don't know about you, but that would wind me up a little bit as well. The only reason Scorps teams up with Shao Tsung and Quan Chi is because they promise him revenge. He's so riled up he agrees. Scorpion even has a change of heart later on when he realises that Sub-Zero is actually the younger brother of his murderer and then he helps him out. But just because he has a skull for a face, he's constantly berated. Number 4, Ryder White. As you play through Dead Island, it seems pretty clear that Ryder White is the game's antagonist. Serving as the voice of guidance, it soon turns out he urges people to abandon prisoners and steals their vaccine. Scene. Lovely stuff. As it turns out, however, Ryder is actually being manipulated by a terrorist named Kevin Sharon. This schmuck has been playing each side off against each other and was also blackmailing Ryder who was trying to save his wife's life. By the time all of this comes out though, it's too late and 
Ryder turns into some giant zombie monster. What a way to go. Number 3, Legane Mactir. Coming from one of the best games ever, Dragon Age Origins, Legane is presented as a traitor who runs away from battle to try and seize control of the kingdom for himself. Sounds bad, right? But it's kind of not the worst thing in the world. Considering he was part of a special group that existed to protect the land of Ferelden, if he hadn't have legged it, no one would have been around to protect everybody from the Darkspawn attack which was on the cards. So yeah, his methods were cruel, but if he had an inkling some bad stuff was on the horizon, surely it makes more sense to live to fight another day and fight a much more important battle. He sacrificed one fight who could win a war. Number 2, King Deity. I'm pretty sure everyone is evil in Kirby given how weird it all is, but King Deity is definitely set up as the bad guy in Kirby's adventure, even though he's just a giant duck thing. To be fair, he does steal the Star Rod, which powers the Fountain of Dreams. And this sucks because as you would imagine, it's the source of nice dreams for the people of Dreamland. And no, I'm not making any of this up. Anyway, Kirby then does wander around whooping the crap out of a tree that cries and a mole that spends the entire boss fight running away from you. How this pink blob didn't realize something was up is anybody's guess. And something is up. The reason Deity stole the rod was to keep it from the Nightmare, a creature that, as the name suggests, wants to spread ill will across the place. And because Kirby went and sorted all this out, this monster is summoned anyway. You idiot, Kirby. Number one, Haytham Kenway. Whether or not you care about the story in Assassin's Creed is another matter entirely. But Haytham Kenway, a Templar, is hell-bent on controlling mankind, and you spend the first quarter of the game establishing a stranglehold on the new colonies to achieve this. Through this period, however, we soon realize that despite his seemingly ill will and being a Grand Master of the Templar Order, he actually does want to reconcile the rift between the Assassins and the Templars, which is causing a hell of a lot of bloodshed. Ultimately, he wants to save lives, even if he has to go about it a funny way. And that is more than Ezio ever did. Know of any other video game villains that were right all along? Let us know in the comments below and then don't to like, share and subscribe. Then go and read more articles on whatculture.com, follow whatculture on Twitter at whatculture and I'm there too at SimonMiller316. I am Simon from whatculture and I'll speak to you again soon.